Alhamdulillah wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam am abad ahabatifillah we live in very strange times and the question arises is tawheed in the Quran is the term tawheed or is tawheed in general is it mentioned in the Quran why the fuss about aqidah why does ahlus sunnah emphasize the aqidah so much in their books in their lectures in their statements and why did the salaf make ihtimam of this and why did the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam busy himself with the call to tawheed why was jihad mashroor or legislated related to tawheed why was hajj a great act of ibadah legislated for what for ta'deem allah the sha'ir al sha'ir al islam sha'ir allah a tawheed all acts of worship we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is a part of Tawheed this is how we manifest Tawheed physically by singling out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone for worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in the Quran I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me worship this is Tawheed al-ibadah this is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So, this is the divine hikmah, the wisdom of why we created. Islam does not leave us in a, in a, a state of fickleness and instability and a state in which we do not know of our purpose in life. But rather, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I have not created man and kind and the jinn, mankind and the jinn, except for the purpose of worshiping me. Letting us know our purpose is what? To worship Allah. Where do we find this? We find this in the Quran. It's Tawheed in the Quran. وَقَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَ فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ وَلَكَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ الرَّسُولِ إِنَّ نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُ الْتَعْبُودِ is Tawheed in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, وَلَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ And we sent to every nation a messenger. إِن نِعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَاجْتَنِبُوا تَعْقُوبُ To call to the worship of Allah or to worship Allah alone and avoid the Ta'gud. The Ta'gud meaning those things which are worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Letting us know our purpose in life is Tawheed and all the NBA, all the messengers, alayhim after the salatu wasalam were sent with the message of what? Rectifying their communities with Tawheed, with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does that negate that we have societal problems, that we have people who leave Islam? No, it doesn't. But rather, the priority is, and what's going to give those people the strength is not just focusing on social programs and so forth, but strengthen their Iman, because Iman is what keeps you in Islam, not the social pro programs, not soccer games, not uh, making jokes and lectures like this, not football teams, but rather following the minhaj al-anbiya, the methodology of the anbiya, alayhim salatu wa salam. وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ لَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ also showing and illustrating that Tawheed is from the Qur'an because our Aqeedah, our Creed, our Islam is from the Qur'an and it's from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says and your Lord has ordered that you worship only وَقَذَ رَبُّكَ أَلَا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ that you worship uh, none except Him إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ it goes back to who? To Allah Azza wa Jal. Accept Him. Wabil walidaini ihsana. Nam. And being righteous to one's parents. Obedient to your parents. Allah coupled this along with Tawheed, showing us the importance of being kind and gentle and righteous towards one's parents. And that it's a great act of ibadah. And He coupled it along with Tawheed because Tawheed is the greatest. It's the greatest fact, uh, thing. Because as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as uh, Ahad al-Mashayikh, al-Ulama, Fudullah, 
أئمة الدعوة قال أعظم ما أمر الله به هي توحيد the greatest thing that Allah has commanded his creation with is توحيد is worshiping Allah alone وأعظم ما نهى أنه الشرك and the greatest thing that Allah has warned against is shirk, is associating partners with him. What is the thing that will get you that you will not be forgiven if you die upon it? That's shirk. But if you committed zina, adultery, if you drank wine, if you did this and you did such and such sins, perhaps Allah will forgive you. You're under the Mashiach. You're at the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're under his his mercy, insha, yaghfirlak, wa insha, yu'adhibak. If he, if he wishes, he will forgive you. If he wishes, he will punish you. But still, if you were one of the muahideen, meaning those people who made ta'zim of tawheed, who worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, then you will be taken out of the fire. But we can't say that about the one who was just... Uh, was was around the community, but they, they remained in ignorance. They didn't know Tawheed. They prayed sometimes. We can't say that about that person. What 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 their status would be if they didn't know Tawheed. They didn't know who Allah is. They didn't know how to worship him. They didn't know where Allah was because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi Kitabi al Kareem. And this is a part of his Tawheed al Asma'i wa Sifat. He subhanahu wa ta'ala says Ar Rahman ala Arsh Istawa. And how many places in the Quran? In at least seven ayats in the Quran, Allah mentions that He, Ar Rahman, rolls above His throne. Why do we have to debate this? Why do we have to bring our intellect into it? Because we are ordered to believe what's in the Quran, wa Allah wa Rasul, and follow Allah and follow Rasul. How do you follow Allah? You know that from the Quran. Allah commands you in the Quran to worship Him and Him alone. That's Ta'atillah. That's obedience to Allah. That's the a'zam ma'amar Allah be. That's the greatest thing that Allah commanded you with. And the greatest thing that He warned you against was shirk and ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In Allah la yaghfiru an yushirika bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna thalik lima yasha. Verily Allah does not forgive that you associate partners with Him, but he, but he forgives for whosoever He pleases other than that. So if you die upon shirk, khalidina fiha fin nar. You'll be in the hellfire forever. So how is it a person in 2015 who supposedly has studied something of Islam because they're teaching people about Islam could be ignorant of this, that Tawheed is the greatest thing that we call to and it's where we begin our call and Shirk is what we warn against because there are things that bring you into the fold of Islam and things that take you out of the fold of Islam. You're responsible for the message. You cannot, you are not responsible for the result. As the Prophet ﷺ was unable to guide his uncle. ﷺ, and he was the Prophet ﷺ. But his uncle was was Abu Talib was 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 influenced by the other mushrikeen, the other pagans. And he they didn't want him. They said, Are you gonna die upon on other than the Milla? Of Abu Muttalib? Are you going to die on other than his religion? Just to follow this new thing that we don't really know about? This is what they held on stubbornly to shirk. The Prophet ﷺ wasn't responsible for the outcome. But rather he ﷺ was responsible for tabligh, for sending the message. And that is our role as well. When we call to Islam, we're not responsible for the results. That doesn't mean we don't take every sabil, mishroor, to try to call people to kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the understanding of the salaf. La. We take every sabil, but we do not compromise the deen. We do not change the call because we're not responsible. We can't hold on to someone's neck, put them in a headlock. We can't chain their hands and say, don't leave Islam. But rather, we sent them the message. We treated them with kindness. We showed them the good mu'amalat of the Muslim, of the mu'min. And we showed them tawheed illah. We showed them tawheed illah. What Allah has ordered us with. 
Subhana. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem wa'budu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'an and worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. This is in the Quran. We haven't even got to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how is it? We ask the question again. Is Tawheed in the Quran? Is Tawheed in the Quran? Wa'budu Allah wa la tushriku bihi shay'an and worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. Do not associate anything with him, any partners with him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa'budu Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding. He began the ayat. Wa'budullah, which is a commandment. It's in the imperative form, meaning it's a command. And what have we learned in many of our lessons that we propagate? That when al amr yufid al wujub, that whenever there's a command in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yufid al wujub, it is an obligation. It means it's something that Allah has commanded you with. You must do it, and it's an act of worship you'll be rewarded with, and you'll be punished if you leave it. So Allah in the Quran said, Wa'budullaha, wala tushriku bi shayin. He commanded with Tawheed, worshiping Allah alone, Tawheed al Ibadah, Tawheed al Uluhiyah, and He prohibited worshiping other than Him. Wa'budullah, Ithbat, wala tushriku bi shayin, a nafi. Ithbat meaning. He began this ayat with an affirmation. He affirmed that he alone should only be worshipped. Tawheed, monotheism. And then he said, Walan tushriku bi shayin, and do not associate a partner with him. And what? That's negating shirk. Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al kareem, kul ta'alu atluma harama rabbukum alaykum ala tushriku bi shayin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Say, Come and see uh, what your Lord has prohibited for you. And that is to not worship anyone besides him. So again, the opposite of that is Tawheed. Allah has prohibited shirk, which necessitates what? It necessitates Tawheed, monotheism. If Allah... Uh, prohibits paganism, what's understood from that is that he affirms monotheism. Allahu Akbar. Listen, listen to one hadith. One hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Kathir min ahadith that affirmed Tawheed. And in one of the ahadith, Qala ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an, man arada in yandar ila wasiyyati Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam alati alayha khatimahu fali yakra quluhu ta'ala. قل تعالوا أتلو أتلو ما حرم ربكم عليكم لا تشتكوا بشيء إلى قوله وأن هذه صراطي مستقيم فاعتبيه ولا تتبي الصبر ابن مسعود رضي الله تعالى عنه said whoever wants to to follow or understand what Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم died upon what he left behind what he died upon then read the statement of Allah the Quran توحيد Say, come and read what your Lord has prohibited for you. Up to the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The Almighty, And verily, this is my straight path. Then follow it and do not follow the paths. The people who call to other da'wahs other than Tawheed are calling you to other paths. Why? Because Allah's path, as He says in the Quran, Tawheed. He says, Have is Surati Mustaqima Fatabiyuhu. This is my straight path. So follow it. Allah commanded you. He affirmed that this is His straight path, which is the path of Tawheed, the path of monotheism, the path of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And He commanded you to follow it. Al-Amr Yufid al-Wujub. A command necessitates an obligation. The Prophet said in a hadith, this is the last thing I want to say. 
عن معاذ بن جبل رضي الله تعالى عنه قال كنت رديف النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم على حمار فقال لي يا معاذ تدري ما حق الله علي بعدي وما حق لي بعدي يا الله قلت الله ورسوله أعلم قال حق الله علي بعدي يعبدوه ولا يشركوا به شيء وحق لي بعدي يا الله إن لا يعذب من لا يشركوا به شيء قلت يا رسول الله فلا أبشر الناس قال لا تبشرهم فيأتقي لو أخرجاه في صحيحين This is a Sahih Muslim in Bukhari uh, the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiallahu ta'ala anhu, it's, it's a hadith of tawheed. It's a hadith about those who haqqiq a tawheed or those, the da'wah. This shows us the da'wah, the da'wah to tawheed. This shows us the right of Allah, what we must do. If it's a right of Allah, it doesn't mean the right of Allah is that we just have work on our social condition. Or the right of, of Allah is that we worry only about the Muslims being in gangs. Or the right of Allah is we worry about the music the, the Muslims being in music and being rappers or being rockers or being punkers or being ravers or whatever. That's not the haq of Allah. That falls under the haq of Allah, but that's not the asl, that's not the foundation. The foundation is tawheed. Why? Because Mu'adh radiallahu ta'ala anhu was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a donkey. And he said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haq Allah ala ibadi. Oh Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his slave? And do you know the right of the slave upon Allah? He said, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the right of Allah upon his slave is that he worships him alone and he doesn't associate any partners with him. And the right of the slave upon Allah is that he does not punish him if he does not associate partners with him. Ahabatifillah. Is Tawheed not in the Qur'an? Is Aqidah not in the Qur'an? I'm sorry if you didn't hear the exact word Tawheed or the exact word referring Aqidah. But this is what the ulama of Islam from the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anu majma'in and especially the tabi'een and the itba'a tabi'een Imam Imam Abu Hanifa used the word Tawheed, Tawheed, uh, uh, Tawheed al-Uluhiyah, if I'm, I recall, look at Fiqh al-Akbar, and Tawheed al-Asma'i wa Sifat. They used this, the early ulama did. So how can you say it's not important? But more importantly, to know and understand that Tawheed is in the Qur'an, that's your duty, that's the call, that's a da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, and those who call it that are not from Ahlul Sunnah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad.